Well, hello there and welcome to this little rundown of mine, which is on the top five hottest web technologies of 2017. Number five, 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 special effect. Number five goes to Vue.js. Now, when Vue.js came out, I was not a fan. I was not a fan because I thought that it was just a copycat of AngularJS. It never brought anything new to the table. And sure, it had the backing of the guy who made Laravel and the Laravel community were digging Vue.js, but I didn't really think much of it. Since then, a lot has happened. I give the disclaimer, by the way, that I'm not a, no, a, a Vue.js developer. I'm not a Vue, I've tried it, but maybe only for about 10 minutes. Nevertheless, I've noticed some incredible things going on. First of all, I'm seeing some of the best web developers on the planet. I mean, people who are just technical marvels of modern day science. Guys who teach every framework known to humanity. And they are saying to me, Vue.js is the best. Vue.js is the best, right? Many of the people who are getting into Vue.js now have nothing to do with Laravel, nothing to do with PHP. It seems to have uh, stretched beyond the Laravel community. And it's basically kind of, I think it has kind of profited in some ways. If I profit, maybe, I don't know if profited is the word, it's free. But it has capitalized or benefited from the angular gs kerfuffle that happened so anyway view view today i salute you okay let's move on at number four 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 echo number four controversial one a new kid on the block some might even say it's not even a web technology but i am giving number four to the go language now, some of you folks have not even heard of the Go language, but let me clue you in. Um, a few of the engineers at Google were recently saying, you know, we're using things like C and C++ and all of that to build this stuff. And half the time, this was invented in the late 70s or the 80s or something like that. And some of the engineers at Google were saying, maybe we should do a, a new programming language. So they came up with this Go. It's, like I say, it's a new kid on the block. Now, again, I am not, and I do give the disclaimer, I'm not a Go developer. And some of you folks may be clicking dislike right now because you're thinking, well, it's not a web technology. Listen, my words are chosen carefully. I have looked around at the documentation and I've looked at some tutorials and whatnot, there is no question that Go is going after the web development community. Go have a look. Tons and tons of tutorials are out there. How to use Go to build websites. They are absolutely getting involved in the web development game. You can build websites with Go. I was looking, this much code, and you can render a web page, right? They're in the game. And I want to tell you something else. Listen, for the first time ever, within the last two weeks, I have observed web development jobs, contract jobs, going for a thousand dollars per day. I never thought it would happen, but it has happened. And yes, you want to know what technology it was? That's right, it was Go. It's going to be red hot. It is literally, as far as I can tell, the highest paid technology of the whole lot right now. It's a thousand dollars a day, folks. I'm telling you right now, backed by Google, brand new, it has to make the list. So, number four's go. Number three. <laughs> Well, this one's going to be kind of boring and disappointing for some of you folks, but I would have to say Angular. I know that it's the thing that we all love to hate and all of that, and I know that they messed up the thing from AngularJS to Angular. They totally messed. It was like a, a lesson on how not to launch a new version of a framework. Shambolic. Then they went from 2 to 4. It was all a disaster, right? But let me tell you something. 
if you think that Angular has gone, then I have a news flash. Angular is not going anywhere. I've looked at the numbers. I've looked at indeed trends. And when you look at Angular, it starts off going up and up and up, becomes really popular. Then when they launch version two, it goes woof. But then it goes like this again. And then not too far into the future, in the not too distant future, it's going to overtake where it was and sky's the limit. Number two, and by the way, this could be a future number one, but I'm giving it number two right now. And that would be Python, okay? And again, okay, it's a language. All right, well, if it makes you happy, I'll say Python, uh, the Django framework with Python, whatever. But here's the vibe. This artificial intelligence stuff is happening. This is the number one priority for companies like Amazon, Alexa, what the, what's the weather like in Glasgow? Turn the volume up. Ah, oh, never mind, it never worked. But things, Amazon, Alexa, please be quiet. Okay. Things like the Amazon Echo, I've got one here. Amazon are right into artificial intelligence. Google, Apple are right into it. Uh, obviously, Microsoft. Artificial intelligence, folks, I'm telling you, this is the next big thing. And it's all Python. It's all about the Python, that's what they are into. And um, I think we've got about seven years until we have a situation where we've basically got Skynet appears, like in the Terminator movie. We've got about seven years, and then it's going to get really heavy. Uh, maybe when that time comes, Python will be number one. But at the moment, it's number two, and it's... Uh, you learn Python, and I'll tell you what, you're doing okay. So that's number two. By the way, the reason why Python is not number one, performance. And that brings us on to number one. The number one hottest web technology of 2017 is Node.js. Why did you kill my teacher? <laughs> And they are pushing that technology forward with some mind-blowing features. Now, let me be straight. Honorable mention to PHP. You take PHP in a 100-meter drag race against Node, there's not much in it. I think PHP might even win. But where Node wins is performance in terms of multitasking, handling tons and tons of stuff at the same time. Concrete example, Walmart had 200 million hits last Black Friday. They got the web development team switching the site to Node.js. And let me tell you something, they handled those 200 million visits on one day easily and effortlessly. As a matter of fact, they only used 1% of the processing power. Think about that. Imagine 200 million people visit your server and the processors are, uh, the processors are at 1%. That's mind-blowing, right? And by the way, speaking of processors, I was working on Node last night. Do you know what I was doing? Do you know, want to know what I was working on last night? I was writing a script that looked at your processor figured out how many cores you have. You know, you get like a quad core processor and all that, right? It figured out the cores, counted them. One line of code, by the way. And then I was allocating different tasks to different cores on the processor. Now, try doing that with PHP. Try, And I've used PHP since 2004. I love it. But the point is, this is, this is a whole new region, you know? In terms of scalability, performance, and all of that, nothing is touching Node right now. Finally, since day one of the web development universe, uh, Java has been the top thing to learn. Java has been like the Rolls Royce. That's what JP Morgan and all the banks and whatnot are using. They're all into Java, right? 
Let me tell you this, people. Within the last month, I have observed several web developer wanted ads. And do you know what it is? It's large corporations who have used Java for years and they are now switching to Node.js. There's nobody switching from Node to Java. They are switching from Java to Node. And who can blame them? Because Node.js is brilliant at dealing with APIs and tons of traffic and all of the stuff that the large banks and financial institutions and insurance companies are into. So you're going to see tons and tons more large companies getting involved with Node.js. I think PayPal are using it now, as are Microsoft and many, many others. So Node.js is the number one web technology. Thank you very much. By the way, if you're into learning Node, I do have a web development tutorial series here on YouTube and it's free. So come along and I'll teach you how to use it. Thanks a lot, stay care. I'd like to do a quick super edit before I upload and just uh, correct myself on one point. I said a moment ago that nothing touches Node.js in terms of speed and performance and scalability, blah, 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 blah. That's not entirely true. That Golang thing, the Go language does actually compete with Node.js and in terms of speed and performance, blah, 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 blah. And I think that we are building up to a scenario very soon, probably within the next two or three years, where uh, it's going to be Go going up against Node.js. That's pretty much where all this is leading to. If anybody's wondering what my personal philosophy is going to be when it comes to choosing technologies, I am just following Google, okay? So if you see Google releasing something, I'm into it, right? Uh, and that goes for a whole bunch of stuff, things that I've not even spoken about here. If anyone from Google, Google ever watches this, did you notice that I was struggling to say the word Google, right? I've got this phone here and I'm supposed to say, okay, Google, and I know it sounds crazy. I don't like those words. I don't feel my can't do it, right? So if someone is from from Google is watching that, can you change the voice commands? I can say to my little Amazon here, Alexa, and it sounds nice. Alexa sounds nice. Okay? Cortana's a little bit pretentious, but I can handle pretentious. But this okay Google thing has got to go.